live in the no panic zone. I'm Steve Gruber. I am America's voice. I'm a man on a mission to make this nation better every single day. Proud to say I believe in America first. I hope you do too. Here are three big things you need to know right now. Number one, the DOJ went after, in fact, it targeted pro-life groups while giving a pass to pro-abortion groups. Just another example of weaponizing the government against one group. Number two, Inflation remains well above 7%, and just think if they still did the numbers the way they did in 1980. But hey, cooking the books, it's what's for dinner. And number three, the push is on. The push is on, like I've been telling you, on COVID and RSV and the flu now. The tridemic, they call it. The flu, which made a miraculous disappearance during the government push for COVID lockdowns at the end of 2020, and through much of 2021, and even early into this year, by so, by those so far left zealots that demanded you complete, you give complete adherence to their demands. Now they want that power and control back, and just like rust, it never sleeps. They will keep coming and coming and coming. They need you to doubt everything. It's how they gain the advantage and take control by putting you, and as many people in America and around the world, in fear, twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week, fear. Powerful motivator. It's why they've been pushing for a climate emergency declaration, because that is something they can play forever. A climate crisis telling you when you can drive, use your refrigerator, air conditioning, or, well, anything else. A powerful method of control. They want to make sure you are snapping to attention. And in fear of what goes wrong if you don't follow the protocol of Earth first insanity. Be afraid. Be very afraid. That is the message that is front and center for the Socialist Democrats, most of whom are more like the kook Bernie Sanders, an avowed socialist himself, who, of course, honeymooned with his wife in the former Soviet Union, was a member of a commune, too, that, of course, before he was kicked out for being too lazy to contribute. And Bernie is a Marxist, of course, who hates our system of government. Bernie hates capitalism and the American way of life. A life of freedom to say as you please, to travel as you please, to raise your family as you please, and of course, to worship God as you please. None of this is okay with the radical leftists that hate everything I just described. Bernie Sanders has nearly all of my life been considered a kook. A kook. And that is how he has been described by Democrats and Republicans alike, but all of a sudden, Bernie, Bernie the Maoist, the American-hating freak that was too lazy to be in a commune, is the popular voice of reason for the American Democrat Party. Think about that. Let that sink in. John Kennedy would have been compelled to shoot Bernie Sanders on the spot for being an enemy of the state because, well, he is. The Democrats today, led by Bernie Sanders, Ilhan Omar, AOC, and a host of other anti-American radicals, want you to fear freedom. They want you to reject freedom in favor of government mandates and security. They want government edicts overruling free will, and yes, before too long, government overruling just about everything. Of course, it's for the children. I mean, isn't it always? These same socialist monsters want you to believe that being a patriot, supporting America first, Donald Trump and other conservative voices in this great nation is somehow a threat to democracy, which, of course, it is nothing of the sort. Those of us that understand the nature of our representative republic are a threat to Bernie and the other radical central government imbeciles. Why? Because we understand the hearts and minds of Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, and those that came decades later like Abraham Lincoln and another 500 million free souls. Some who lived and some who sacrificed all. Those that fought on the battlefield of war like the beaches of Normandy or the rice paddies of Vietnam and the desert of Afghanistan. And those that fought to survive government overreach here at home. They're all patriots. They all deserve respect because without all of the sacrifice from the names you know and, well, the many of the names you don't, we wouldn't be here today having this conversation between myself and you. I'm sorry if you don't understand this by now because if you don't, you're really not paying attention or you're living in denial. America is a land where hard work, dedication, and sacrifice came together in pursuit of something much bigger. It's sad, it really is, that so many people simply do not understand this in 2022. But I cannot deviate from the path of true enlightenment, which is this. 
We are Americans. We are truly blessed to have been born here or come here legally. We're not in a position to back away or back down from the incredible responsibility we've all been given, whether we like it or not, and that is defending America from those that would destroy her from any and all angles. I swear I will defend her from enemies both foreign and domestic. I was never required to take that oath, but I do today voluntarily. In fact, join me in this, because this is something that is terribly, terribly lacking in this country today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, for all of us. God bless America. We have to join together to save this nation. So I ask you today, who's with me? We have challenges on so many fronts. The open border that is inexcusable. The crime raging in our streets as police officers are denigrated, which is inexcusable. The control of our natural resources, our natural resources, they don't belong to the left. They belong to all of us. The land, the timber, the water, the natural gas, the oil, the right to be free, the right to be prosperous, the right to keep this nation number one in the world. That belongs to all of us. Our nation, not theirs, ours. And if they won't share, we'll need to teach them a thing or two about sharing. Because we need policies to put this nation first. And the way you get there today is to speak up. Don't shy away. Don't give in. Don't say, well, the elections didn't go very well. So what? We're still here. We're still here. We still have a voice. We still have the chance to fight for this nation. You look at the maps and you see how many counties in this country are red. How many people believe in our nation, in this country of America? Focus on that. Never give up. Never give in. We're in this together. And we have to be. Freedom is something that is not for the faint of heart, I guess. Freedom is something that we have to defend and fight for every single day. I'm Steve Gruber. This is the Steve Gruber Show. Good to see you today. I'll be back.